Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Duck Tip Mechanic. In this video, I'm going to show you how I repaired this compressor that I got for free on Facebook Marketplace because uh, it wouldn't turn on. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. This is another episode of my series, Free on Facebook, in which I repair, reuse, and repurpose free items I find on Facebook Marketplace. This particular compressor is a 13 gallon, 125 PSI compressor that I picked up for free. A new compressor like this would cost you north of $200. Uh, the reason it was for free is because it doesn't turn on. Um, and you don't even have to turn, plug this one in to figure out why it, may, it might not be turning on. It's because the pressure switch right here is uh, mechanically broken. It just rotates freely like this. We're going to try to uh, replace that switch and see if that solves this or that gets this compressor working again so we can have a fully functional compressor for a couple of bucks. This is a Husky 13 gallon 5 horsepower compressor. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this cover. The principles of replacing this high pressure switch will be universal across multiple compressors, especially because I'm going to be using a universal high pressure switch. Uh, more on that later. This is the high pressure switch that we're going to have to change on this unit here. Um, it's a four port switch where you have a port for the gauge for the compression inside the tank, a port for the gauge that tells you the pressure going out, you have a port for the hose that uh, brings the pressure um, to the um, valve and then you have a port for the pressure relief valve and there's also one for the unloader valve here, the unloader line. Anyways, this model of air compressor has been discontinued because I think it's a little bit old so I couldn't find this exact pressure relief valve anywhere. This is a, this air compressor is is a, rated at 135 psi and it cuts out at 135 and it cuts in at 95 so i was trying to find something that would meet those specs but unfortunately there was nothing that was available but uh, they do make these universal um pressure relief switches that you can use for multiple different uh air compressors and you just have to adjust them and this is this is i picked this up on uh, amazon prime at uh that's the name. It's just a heavy duty pressure switch, four port, 26 amps. That's the LIFO is the brand that makes it. Here it is. So I'll show you how we're going to fit this pressure switch with this, or replace this compression switch with this generic universal one. Um, it's probably not going to be an exact fit, meaning we're probably gonna have to move stuff around like um, the ports may be in different locations because it just looks physically different. But uh, this is, the only hope, we, the only real hope we have about bringing this uh, thing back to life because uh, at this rate it won't turn off or it won't turn on. I look into this pressure switch a little bit further and uh, kind of look at how it, um, how we're going to install it. Let's go ahead and remove the old one. The wiring is really simple. Um, let's uh, let me show you a little bit of a different angle at it, of it. Alright, so before we remove the pressure switch, let's undo the wires. Basically, we have a universal motor here that drives this pump that pressurizes the air. Um, this motor is wired to this pressure switch here. This black wire is going to the motor. We're going to unplug that. You don't really don't even have to label it anything because it's just two wires coming from the motor and two wires coming or two wires coming from electrical um, the plug. And one is a ground, which is the green wire, which is pretty easy to tell. Uh, 
and this is the two plugs that come in from that bring the power in and this plug as well as a new one has it's labeled where the motor wires are and where the, the line wires are supposed to be so that's quite helpful all right After disconnecting all the wires, it's time to undo all the fittings on the various ports. Once the fittings are removed, it's time to remove the valve. I found that giving the valve a couple of taps with a mallet going in the counterclockwise direction helps to undo it. So before I install the high pressure switch, uh, I just want to discuss it briefly. So I picked this up on uh, Amazon Prime for I think 12 bucks. It's made by Lefo, and it's actually preset to start the compressor at 135 psi, and uh, then to turn it off when it gets to 175 psi. But uh, this compressor is only rated at 125 psi, and your compressor at home may, may be in between a range of that. So this needs to turn on at 90 and turn off at 125. So we need to adjust this. And uh, luckily for us, this is actually adjustable. So first, uh, we're going to just open up this cover here. Just take that off. And if you see these two ports, uh, that's how you adjust the cut in and cut out pressures of this, temperature, uh, this pressure switch. So this port here will allow us to decrease and increase the cut in and cut out pressures. While this right here will allow us to increase and decrease the cut off pressure or the cut out, yeah, the, the cut out pressure um, without affecting the cut in pressure. So basically, we, if you want this to get down to 135 without affecting when the compressor turn on, then you would just turn this. But uh, otherwise, you would, if you wanted to lower or increase both, you would turn this. So I don't know how many turns it takes before, you know, it cuts down to a certain PSI. So I'm just going to have to um, go do a little bit of trial and error. So since right now it's at um, 135 cut in and 175 cut out, I'm gonna, just going to de decrease the port that uh, controls both. I'm just going to give it two, two full turns and see what that does. Because uh, 175 is too much for this compressor. So I did that there, and I'll also give the cutout pressure uh, maybe a half a turn there. All right, so I've decreased the cut in and cut out um, to some number, which I don't know yet, which is going to have to play around with it there. And I've also decreased the cut out a little bit more than that as well. So we'll go install this, then we're going to have to play around the parameters to get it to meet the specs on this compressor. When installing the new valve, just make sure to use Teflon tape and all the threads. Then go ahead and install all the gauges and the pressure relief valve. On this particular compressor, the unloader line had a crimp-on connector that I had to cut off and uh, use a quarter-inch compression nut with a insert instead. Um, I picked this up at Home Depot for a couple of bucks.
Wiring the switch is really simple. As the new switch has all the terminals for the line wires and the motor wires clearly labeled. There's also two screws for the ground wire. I did add, have to add ring connectors to the end of all the wires because the other switch used spade connectors. I also added um, wire strain clamps to the valve um, because uh, I did, this would prevent the wire from being pulled out of the switch just in case if there's a strain on it or a pull on it. And I inserted the wires for the plug through one clamp and the wires from the motor through the other clamp. All right, so I got everything wired up and I got all the connections made. I will take a bottle of uh, soapy water here and a spray on the connections after I everything. Um, if I make sure it doesn't leak, but uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. I've already got it plugged in here and uh, let's see what happens. Even though the compressor turned on, it did take a series of adjustments to get it to the right parameters that I wanted. Turning the ports clockwise increases the pressure and counterclockwise decreases it. Alright, so I pretty much got this thing all, all dialed in. Uh, it. Uh, Pressure rises to about 125 PSI, then it cuts everything off. So that meets exactly what the spec of the compressor is. And the cut-in pressure, uh, I got it to about 75 PSI. So once it gets below 75, it uh, turns on. I think um, when it comes out of the factory, it's 95 PSI. But uh, uh, I'm okay with the 75 PSI being the cut-in pressure. Um, I can always adjust it um, using the silver knob um, later if I need to. So then I would have to adjust... I'd have to use it be doing both the black and the silver knob actually if I was if you wanted to just just to cut in pressure but as of now I'm going to leave this at the 75 psi cut in and the 125 psi cut out um, and I'll show you I'll demonstrate that by just pulling this um, pressure relief valve here I should bring the pressure back down and once it gets to about 75 or 80 ish it should turn back on Since the new valve was physically different than the old valve, I did have to use my oscillating tool to cut away some plastic on the cover to make it fit. So I'm happy with the install. The cutout on the cover turned out pretty good. It covers the pump belt while also allowing me to uh, read the gauges and uh, control the regulator. I also made a little hole here for the cord. Overall, not bad. As long as it works, because they cost me about 15 or 20 bucks in total in parts. So, I'll take that.